Welcome back, NRX here on the 23rd of December, 2023. Uh, Merry Christmas, happy holidays to all of those who uh, are indeed watching or maybe watching it a little later. Um, I'm Speed at the bottom of the helix and our next presenter had been building the Split Rock Mining Company layout for the past 15 years. The layout had been featured on the cover of four magazines, an NMRA calendar, and also numerous articles in print um, and online. Opsix Dispatcher magazine has an upcoming article on the current operations of the layout, so please go check that out. Uh, he worked as a locomotive engineer for over 20 years at Union Pacific and also co-hosts the Crossing Gate podcast, which, by the way, has the sponsor section in his lovely wife, Diane's voice. The Split Rock Mining Company can be found on Facebook, YouTube, and TikTok. Please welcome the superintendent of the Twin Cities Division, Thomas Gazia. Hello, everyone. How are you doing, Speed? Always good. Always good. Always good. So I'll explain today what I'm going to show you is a video on how I create scenery using florist foam. Uh, this allows me to make stuff at my bench, the typical florist foam you get from the craft. I've made a combination of techniques from Mike Rose and Luke Toen and modified it to fit my needs through scenic, my layout, and others. So I'm going to show you how I do the foam, static grass. We'll go to ground foam how I create bushes, birch trees, and all kinds of pine trees and ready to photograph it. So I hope I hope this isn't lightning. And I think we're right. ready if you want to roll that roll it there, Brad. Hello everyone. I'm Thomas Gazier. And today I'm going to show you how I create all my scenery on my workbench. Everything you see in these scenes on my layout have been created on my workbench using florist foam and some simple techniques that I've learned from articles, videos, and in-person visits to other layouts. As you look at these scenes, all of the hills in the background have been created with florist foam. It's been carved to shape. I then add static grass, small shrubs, some custom bushes, trees, and tall pine trees to create the scenes on my layout to represent northern Minnesota. In this video tutorial, I will show you how to carve the florist foam, how to add the static grass, then we'll work our way up from ground foam to bushes to birch trees and then pine trees and create a complete scene. I will show you how I create those hills in the background, those highly detailed pine trees, the birch trees standing next to them, the tall bushes, plus the small shrubs and the grasses. Using the florist foam, you can create all of these scenic elements away from your layout. You do not have to have the mess and the glue and the static grass going everywhere where you don't need it. You can control everything and keep your layout environment clean.
all of these terrain features are created with florist foam. They've been carved to fit and to shape and then everything you see on them was added at the workbench with only a small amount of blending to make it fit into the scene on my layout. And this is the type of florist foam you want. You want the Flora Craft. I go to my local crafting store, it happens to be a Michaels. They have a large selection and it actually now comes in two different colors, green or white. Here is the display for the florist foam. You can see it comes in all different sizes and shapes. I try and get the largest piece I can and use one of their handy coupons. Now they also sell this dry foam. You do not want this. If you try and carve this, it will just turn into dust. Make sure you get the floral foam. Here is the florist foam we will be using. I also have a old serrated knife. It's very dull, but it works great to shape this. I then go on to a handheld rasp to give it the final form. I like how this works on it. I also use liquid nails as an adhesive to attach the pieces to each other and to my layout. And then of course the static grass, the smaller two millimeter works great. I like the mesh strainer type of static grass applicator. It can get into many places that the tall ones cannot. Of course, I just use standard carpenter's glue to attach the grass. I'll be using this old cardboard box and create a diorama using the florist foam techniques. I just painted it blue, have some sky on there. I put some foam down for some tracks. I will attach some flex track later and apply some ballast. The rear portion is where we will put our scenery that we create on our workbench. I will be using two pieces of florist foam to get the correct length for our diorama. I will use liquid nails to attach them to each other. I will also put a piece of solid core wire between the two pieces end to end to reinforce the joint a little more. The adhesive is now dried and now it's time to start the carving. We're gonna knock down these edges, make everything look a little more rounded for nature. We'll start with the serrated knife and then go on to the rasp. The rough outline is done. Now I'll use the rasp to do the final touches on it. As you can see, this makes quite a mess. So have your shop vac handy. This is one of the main reasons I like doing scenery on my workbench. Now adding the static grass. I learned this trick from the war gamers when they make dioramas is you do not have to stick a nail into the scenery to conduct the electricity. You just have to follow around the little clip underneath the static grass applicator. 
you can cover a lot of ground this way. And here's another reason I like building scenery on my workbench. I can flip it on its side and get the materials onto the vertical location. So it's time to make some trees. Here we have a pile of super tree material. That's one of our supplies. We also need this tweezers. I also use these optic visors to see because we're going to use the tweezers to pluck out what I call the banana leaf. So I've picked out a bunch of material that looks closest to birch trees and now I've got my tweezers and I'm going to start pulling out these long leaves because it just makes a better looking tree in my opinion if you don't have these hanging off near the branches. You want to use the tweezers and you want to grab these leaves right next to what I would call the trunk and pull it off and get as many off as you can for a really good looking birch tree. The trees are all plucked as I call it. I have my pile of long leaves over here and we also have a pile of excess material that has fallen off the trees. Now do not discard this. This is valuable material for scenery and I'll show you in the next segment. The trees now are very curvy or curly or however you want to call them. Birch trees are fairly straight. So I will show you my method on how I create very straight birch trees out of these super trees. And here is what I use. A large pot of boiling water. I put the trees in there. I let them go for 20 minutes. Then I come back and stir them around and flip them over and let them boil for another 20 minutes. Make sure you have a lid on it. It does not smell up the house. It actually smells like tea brewing. Now you're wondering, what do I do with these soggy trees that I've strained through the colander here? Well, I hang them upside down. I put up a wire and I clip them with clothespins upside down. The trick is to add weight to basically the top of the tree. And I add the weight by adding more clothespins, more and more until the tree is straight. And then I leave it overnight and while they dry, they will retain this straight shape. This is how I attach the trees and the bushes to the florist foam scenery. I use a hot glue gun and I find some pins. I have a cutter here and I either cut up safety pins or woodland scenic scenery tea pins and I start storing them in a little container and I'll show you what we do next. Here is our dried trees. 
Look at how straight they are. These are gonna be great looking birch trees. And instead of just trying to push these into the florist foam, I use a pin hot glued to the bottom. The glue for the static grass will form a shell that makes it difficult to push pins through. You'll see when we start applying the scenery. Put a little bead of hot glue on a pin or on the tree and glue them together. And when it dries, we stick it in a scrap piece of foam. Time to paint. Of course, birch trees are white. Grab a spray bomb and head outside, give them a good coat, and then we'll get back to them the next day. We have the pins that we cut earlier, the excess tree material, and our hot glue gun ready to go. And now let's combine them to make some bushes. So you need the stem from the bush and you hot glue that to a pin, just like you did the trees, and start sticking them in a scrap piece of foam. Just a hint, but you can never make enough of these. Time to paint our bushes, something dark or tan colored. I have this can of camouflage paint handy. I'll use that. I'll paint the whole tray and then we'll let it dry and come back to them tomorrow. The birch trees are dry. Time to add the distinctive black marks, some black paint, tiny brush. I also find a magic marker works wonderful for doing this. Those are some good looking birch trees. Now let's add the foliage on those birch trees. I like to use Scenic Express knock leaves in variety of green colors. also have fall colors but I don't use those as I am modeling July. Find some small cups to pour the leaves out into so you can sprinkle them on the trees once you apply the glue. And here comes my favorite glue. Aquanet hairspray. All weather hairspray. It's also unscented that helps. And this is only if you can't find any white rain. Our cups are filled with a variety of colors. We've got our bushes here all dry from being painted. So we take the hairspray and spray the bush over a trash can, come back and sprinkle on whatever color you desire and stick it in a spare piece of foam. We do the same thing for the trees, spray the top and sprinkle on the leaves. Try not to get any on the trunk. Ah, 
I add the leaves over the cup to save on products. I get quarter inch sticks, usually found at art stores. I also have a hobby knife for whittling to take away the corners. And also a ruler so I can measure the length of the tree if I want a 60, 80 or 100 foot tall tree. And I use the hobby knife to cut that to the correct length. I also have some sandpaper to smooth out the balsa wood. And a zona saw, which I'll use to create a bark effect on the bottom. Florist wire, 24 gauge works great. Also something to cut that with. And some nails. We'll use these to stick into the bottom of the tree trunk so we can stick the tree into the florist foam. And also pliers to stick the florist wire into the tree and some CA glue.
balsa wood shaped like a pine tree, we're going to use the zona saw and scrape it vertically down the base to give it the impression of tree bark. Take the nails and use our cutters to cut off the top. And then we'll use the pointy end to make a hole in the bottom of the tree, put some super glue on it, and then push the dull end back up into the tree. Time to make the tree branches. We're gonna get our 24 gauge florist wire, a handy cutter, and we're gonna cut these in one inch or a little bit longer lengths. And we're going to cut a lot of these and then put them in a little storage container. And we'll, once we have enough, we'll get back to adding them to the tree. Adding the branches to the tree, we'll have our handy CA glue, We'll get a Woodland Scenics T-pin and of course all the florist wire we cut for branches. And we'll use the pin to pre-poke some holes into the balsa wood to make things easier. Then we'll use the pliers and dip the florist wire into the CA adhesive and then shove that into the hole in the balsa wood. The balsa is soft enough to take it and the CA glue will, will make sure it stays. Our trees are now looking like something Charlie Brown would really be proud of. So we'll get our wire cutters and we'll cut off the longer branches that don't seem to fit. And then we'll taper all the branches down at an angle, like a good pine tree. After we do that, it's time to paint. And we'll get out a nice dark primer, paint that bark. Now that the trees are painted, let's add the needles. Let's get our trees to look like this one right here. And we're going to do that by using static grass. We're 
We're going to use four millimeter static grass in a variety of colors. Three greens and a uh, straw colored. Another tool we'll need will be a flat paintbrush and of course our glue and you can use aerosol or pumps. What we are not going to use is the static grass applicator. We have our four cups filled with the static grass. We have our glue and we're going to start with the straw colored static grass. We're going to apply two coats. We're going to try to not get any on the trunk. The brush is used to pat down the needles if they're sticking straight up. We want to have them pointing out or downward. Now we will add the colors. We will add the light on the bottom, the medium green in the middle, the dark green on the top. And then after all those are added, we will do some blending. Now we will use the dark green and blend that over the entire tree. I'll use the medium green to blend from the middle down and the light green one more coat on the bottom and then we'll sprinkle on some straw. I believe these are good looking pine trees you can have in the foreground. You can see through them like an actual pine tree and they photograph really well. If you're going to go outside and photograph these, I would recommend spraying a dull coat over them. Otherwise, you can seal them with more hairspray after you've finished applying the needles. The straw makes nice dead branches for the bottom of the tree. The static grass has dried. Now I'm going to apply Scenic Express Super Turf. And I like these in a variety of green colors as well. It's a little more texture than the Woodland Scenics ground foam. I apply this by using glue at first and then I will use a wetting agent such as alcohol from a pipette and then drip Woodland Scenic Scenic Cement over the top to make sure everything is sealed. Now it has dried. I've used a variety of colors. I've broken up the ridges and as you can see nothing's coming off no muss no fuss none of that is on the layout if it did it's on my workbench and easy to clean so now we can bring it over to the layout or our diorama it fits just fine you can see the track, I've painted it and put some ballast on there. Now it's just time to blend. But first I'm gonna tack it down with some liquid nails, and put some weight on it, let that sit for a while. And then I'll use the white glue and I'll put that down between the diorama and my florist foam and start adding the ground foam.
now we are getting to the really fun part. It's time to add those bushes and birch trees and pine trees that we created. You'll need a needle nose pair of pliers and you'll want to grab the bushes by the pin at the bottom. You're gonna have to push hard to get through that shell, but once they're through, they're gonna stick. Another advantage to florist foam is I can stick these bushes in on the vertical surfaces. I can have them sticking straight out towards the front of my layout. Let's add the pine trees. Notice the branches on the bottom. I tried to simulate dead branches by putting straw on there. Try to keep the pine trees vertical or straight as you can. If one of the bushes breaks, save the pin for the next project and then take the top of the bush and just stuff it in there somewhere. Birch trees tend to grow in large clumps and the super trees don't work very well when you're trying to push them together because of the large foliage at top. So here is what I created to beat this problem. And I use this on my layout and they're basically fake birch trees. Here in my shadow box, you can see how I created these fake birch trees. They're basically solid strand wire. I painted white and added black stripes to, and I stripped the bottom to allow it to push into the florist foam scenery. I buy a variety of sizes of wire to show different size tree trunks. I go to the hardware store and buy it by the foot and then cut it to lengths. On the areas that are not in the shadow box but have the actual super trees, I will stick the wire in there and push the top into the crown of the tree so you can't tell where the wire ends.
The birch trees look great at this point, but there's one more problem to solve, and that's when you can look through your forest and see the sky backdrop. But I have a solution for this. Notice you cannot see through my forest. It is dark back there, and it looks like it goes on forever. But if I remove a piece of foam core that I painted black, you can then see the backdrop. I used foam core and painted it black and put it behind my scenery. But I now have some black corrugated plastic and I will just cut this to shape to fit the floral foam scenery that I created. I think this really changes the appearance, especially if you're looking at your scenery from eye level. Wow, Tom, I am so glad I model a desert scene and don't have to build any trees because that was just marvelous. So we have a few questions here, if you're ready. Uh, I am how ready. Many trees, how many trees on the Split Rock Mining Company layout? Not 28,000. So <laughs> for Michelle, <laughs> I, I would say over 500 and probably 1,000. Probably about a thousand, I mean. So, so someone asked, is that foam hard or the kind that you can shape just pushing your fingers on it? It is the hard foam. I know they make two, two types, the dry foam. This is the type that you can just push your finger in. Don't use this. Use the floral foam, the darker green or the white one. Okay. If you decide you want to add more color to an already sprinkled tree, can you spray um, the Aquanet again without damaging the tree? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. When I'm done with the tree, I usually give it one more coat of the adhesive that I'm using. And you can come back and add any type of color for some fall foliage on the top or dead leaves. Yeah, it's it's really a neat trick that you can keep adding layers and layers of the color of your choice on these trees. So you explained somewhere that you do the different colors at different heights? Yes. Yes, on the, 
on the coniferous trees, I'll do a dark at the top, medium in the middle, and light at the bottom, and then blend it all with the dark green uh, static grass, and then sprinkle on the bottom some of the straw color to show dying needles on a pine tree. Now, at some point you said you, you, you spray paint the trees. Yes. Yeah, I spray paint the uh, pine trees after I've added the branches using the, uh, the florist foam. So once I've got the branches in the trees, then I'll take them outside and just hit them with a spray can of a dark or a tan or some I'll vary it up between groups of trees. Okay. And once they're painted, then add the static grass and I don't have to paint them anymore. Okay. So there's there's no there's no dull coat or other things needed to fade them in or out like like we no. do with box cars. Correct, correct. Uh, Mr. Toen showed on his video that he uses a dull coat on his trees because he films outside and he didn't want a real shine. I haven't had that problem with my LED lighting and things. I have heard of people spraying some to get a different color, but that's a lot of work for me when you can just color it with the static grass as you put it on. Okay. <clears throat> so someone said, what are your thoughts? We have heard people say soak the trees in glycerin. I think they're talking about the super trees. There's a lot of ways to go at it method I showed is because I need straighter trees. I saw Michelle mention something about aspen trees and the glycerin wouldn't help uh, for what I'm making. Uh, the only other step I may add is after I boiled them and I hang them up, I might, before I hang them up, I would dip them in a mixture of thin to Mod Podge or white glue. And then when the glue hardens, then the tree won't won't even try to get back to its original curly shape. But uh, no, I've never used the glycerin trick, but I have seen others who are making a more uh, oaks or elm type forest there. So uh, then someone asked, do you remove the insulation from the wire? Uh, the wire, like I said, for the pine trees, no, because that comes, it's not a wire, it's a florist wire. But the wire for the, the fake birch trees, I, I do strip the bottom because it makes it easier to poke into the, okay. the florist fall. Okay. So, so uh, I believe Michelle asked, would you use the same method as the birch trees to create an aspen grove? Yes, yes. In fact, a uh, good friend of mine, uh, another MMR up in Canada, was, is modeling the Colorado narrow gauge, and he showed me this method for building, you know, his thousand aspen trees. He, he painted the trunks a little different color and used maybe more golden leaves. But if I was making aspens, I would do this, and I'd also make, you know, the uh, the the fake. Uh, trunks to put in there because aspens grow in a rather thick clump too. Aspens are the Colorado birch tree. I think that'd be an excellent way to model that. So a uh, quick question, what would you do to increase the depth of field on a plain foam layout? Depth of field on a plain foam layout? Uh, some type of backdrop, you know, uh, if you're trying to do it in person, I like the little black, you know, behind the trees so it doesn't look two inches deep. It looks a lot deeper. You know, if you're going to photograph it, maybe drop drop a green screen and put in a backdrop or something. Um, but like most most of my scenes are not more than a foot deep, but you feel like you're in the forest. You feel like you're deep in there, if that's the question. No, I think if it's Marty asking, then it could also be a plywood layout. It doesn't necessarily have to be foam. Oh, oh, okay. Okay, a few more scenery questions that we got earlier. Yeah. What is the best advice for realistic scenery? Uh, the best advice, and what I use is layering from top to bottom, static grass to ground foam to medium-sized bushes, medium trees to taller trees. 
and also from front to back, you want to layer your colors, layer your height, layer your textures. If you're doing ground foam, use all kinds of different ground foams you can find instead of one. You want to break up the golf course look. You know, static grass, every four inches should have a different color possibly or a different length. What was your most difficult scenery project? The most difficult one uh, in tree making was my willow tree. <laughs> I only made one. That's got over 500 individual branches. And currently, what is difficult for me is water. I'm not very good at making water. I have some small pond scenes and a little lake. But I also have a huge harbor scene for my ore dock. And that's going to be a while before I get to that. So water is difficult for me. That's a challenge. So second last question, what is next on the split rock? Next will be finishing up scenes on my upper level. I have a yard office and an engine facility. And then I will be going to urban scenery for the small town on the North Shore of Lake Superior I have. So that'll be quite different making structures instead of trees in the North Woods. Cool. Now, I was fortunate to visit uh, Thomas Layout, I believe, last year in October, November. And it is a definite must. Okay, so call the local authorities to get a a warrant or something so they can lock him up while you visit his layout that way you don't have to go through the whole permission process you know you can just sneak in take a thousand photos and get out so uh, where can they find more information on the split rock mining company layout that's good you can find more on uh, facebook i have a facebook page for the split rock, split rock mining company i'm on youtube of course on split rock just started on TikTok, uh, which is very interesting. And of course, anywhere on the Twin Cities Division uh, groups page, you can get a hold of me there and ask any questions you want. I have no secrets, and I'll probably ask you more questions than you ask me. So, <laughs> yeah. well, Tom, thank you very, very much for an awesome clinic. We will uh, see you uh, see you soon. Thank you. Thanks, everyone.